I wish there was somebody in the room who knew a little bit about what we were talking about. You, do you think there is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I, I think you're recommending a, a, a guest order swap. Let's, but. let's get down with Ben Nelson. See what's going on. All right. Well, let's, let's have our swap. first our first guest come up, uh, Ben Nelson, and we'll I'll, I'll tell, tell you what he's doing in a second. Awesome. Oh yeah. I guess the reason I thought Brandon was recommending a guest swap was because I don't know that Ben Nelson is. I only know what Ben Nelson's objective is in a very very overview fashion. Your your part your 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 project is a thing called Project Minerva. The Minerva Project, yeah. And uh, give us the fucking Wikipedia paragraph that I read. <laughs> or I will. So M Minerva is, is effectively a way to create uh, a university the way it's supposed to be. So basically, everything that universities say they do, right? teach people how to think critically, teach people how to problem solve, teach people how to understand other people, interact effectively, communicate effectively... Turns out they don't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. we the do. college, oh. the, the idea of like college uh, class shopping carts and stuff, isn't that like related to the decline? Because it's like not about a curriculum anymore. It's about selling these digital products that are actually supposedly pieces of an education. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, and you know, it's not even that anymore because what they're really selling isn't education. Right? I mean, if, if you think that universities are actually about education, if you think that people choose universities based on education, why are they spending so much money on lazy rivers and campuses and tanning beds yeah. and sports teams? They are, in fact, right? selling you, first of all, well, they're, they're approaching you as a family. Right. They, they need the kid engaged. They need the kid to say, I want to go to that school because I might get late and I might have fun. I might not kill myself. And they, but simultaneously, the more important part of the family, the parents need to go, oh, and after that, job placement. Yeah, job placement and I think I was and, wrong. I think and, I was wrong from your reaction. Yeah, yeah, you kind of yeah. you kind of So, so I think I think there's one other thing which is, you know, the colleges sell different packages to different students. And one of the things that colleges don't talk about especially the the Ivy League, the highly selective schools that claim that they're need blind, claim that oh, we don't really look at how wealthy you are, which is a total lie. They sell a very different package to rich kids than they do to everyone else. And the problem is rich kids, the top 1%, are 50% of the students going to these schools. 50%. right? And you can't do that if you really need blind. So for them, the pitch is very, very different. The pitch is look at the theme park that you're going to be going to. And yeah, you know, you got courses and this and that, and you can choose whatever you want. But look, between you and me, slash between everyone, once you get in, there are no Fs. You take whatever courses you want. There's no curriculum. You're guaranteed a diploma. Is that really a thing that's able to be transmitted, dog whistled, if you will, to families? Like, for instance, if someone was absolutely 100% observably dyslexic, which is not a crime. Mm -hmm. Geniuses are dyslexic. But Absolute, someone who, is, as my who has not treated it at all mm -hmm. um, and is therefore functionally illiterate, cannot read a piece of paper publicly without fucking up the words, cannot form sentences without confusing us. Yeah. Um, and then, like, like, but I still want to be president. Yeah. Uh, like there are you're saying that because this is what boggles my mind. I yeah. thought that there were I mean, the, the, you said you said no F's. The, 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 that's actually somehow broadcast out to the families like your kid won't get an F here. Yeah. So uh, so so one shockingly underreported story from a couple of years ago um, was it happened at the University of North Carolina. So University of North Carolina, the oldest pu public university in the United States. Old Miss Old Daisy. Th yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> My alma um, mater. Yeah. <laughs> so University of North Carolina um, uh, discovered, shockingly, three years ago, to nobody's knowledge, that for the previous 18 years, they invented classes that didn't exist, put them in a course catalog, didn't bother assigning a room to them, because they never met, and they were specifically in place to enable several of their athletes to get phantom A's. Right. Now, when this wow. was discovered, it was some secretary deep in the bowels of the organization that took all the blame and everyone else, the head of the sports department, the provost, the president, no one knew, no one knew, right? And when it was investigated by the accreditors, the people who are supposed to actually be watchdogging these folks, they said, eh, you shouldn't do this again. 18 years, they gave away fake degrees. 
Now, people look at this and they say, oh, my God, that's that's like flat out fraud. And was that all athletes? Because I feel like I've seen I, I saw Johnny be good with uh, oh. uh, uh, what's his name from from from. Whatever, God, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Anthony, uh, you did great in uh, season two. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, we we we're, I feel like that's been like since I was a kid. That has always been an athlete thing. That like oh, a, it's much more pervasive. But but and, and that's the real problem. So the problem is that other universities have you know who, who looked at UNC and, and just passed judgment and said, oh my God, uh, you know horror, the horror of that. What they've done internally, like if you look at, at some of the most selective universities in the country, they, what they do is they just don't issue Fs to anybody. Right? So I'll, I'll give you the, the, the story. A very, very, very selective university. You've all heard the name. I will, I will protect the guilty um, by leaving out their name. I had a, a friend who was a, a teaching assistant there. Harvard. And I'm not going to say exactly where. But, it you rhymes know. with Harvard. <laughs> it rhymes with Mayo. Right. So... Uh, so the very short version is that the, their their rule was that you basically you only got grades based on tests, and if you miss miss uh, two of the tests, it's 100 percent the final. And there was a girl who missed both the midterms, and then skipped the final. Okay, didn't take any of the tests. So when it was time time to give her grades, the TA gave her an F, and the professor when he looked at the F, he said, uh, "Who who got an F?" And he said, "This is this girl who didn't take a single test." And he said, "Yeah, that's a C plus." What? C okay. plus. Now, is this a, so? so that happened to me, I think, in astrology. I uh, yeah. I definitely got an F on a test, and it was like C, and it was like, well, yeah. that didn't that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, what, okay, so in that example, that's a real life example, real life but example. it's an anecdotal example. But so yeah. so so now, just tell us. Like, wh why? Who is why, that right. girl? Why, why is that professor doing that? Well, uh, it, he did that because actually the rules of the university. Uh, so in, in elite institutions, when you want to have half of your students to be rich, you're going to have to make a lot of exceptions, even at the very best universities. God, that makes fucking sense. Damn it. I went to fucking Marquette and I had to drop out. I got an F in English because they busted my you, you balls. Didn't, you, didn't go to a, so you didn't go to an elite university. Every time I cut university. class, my yeah. grade yeah. went down. I think I was yeah. like, this is harder than high school. Well, so, so actually, that's the sad part, because the higher you climb, the more this great inflation is occurring. Oh, my. Always wow. knew it. Yeah. Never heard it from a yeah. qualified yeah. individual. Yeah. Now, does this have anything to do with loans? Well, not so much, because these schools don't really give out loans, okay. right? Because, and especially to the students that, you know, can afford to pay $70,000 a year. Who can do that? Half of their students. Wow. The that's 1%. how bad it is. The fucking idiots. We've raised a nation of rich oh. idiots. Wow. Privileged rich idiots. Privileged. Well, and, and, and not necessarily yeah, smarter well, or better equipped to go that. into the workforce? No, not at all. I mean, in fact, if you, if you look at how employers rate the quality of graduates from universities, it's abysmal. Abysmal. 96% of chief academic officers at universities say that they prepare their students well for the job, right? The job force. The, this is what parents really care about. 11% of employers agree. Right, eleven wow. percent. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been that's been like the yeah, last ten years or right. so. That's like that bubble burst where right. somebody right. bothered. As with Enron, somebody finally said, "Come on, right. we need to see a ledger." Right. And then after a lot of hemming and hawing, it's yeah. like, yeah, no, no one gets a job that went to college. And basically, you. But however, there's a meta channel to that, which is. If you can afford to send your kid to Harvard, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to get a little uh, classist <laughs> here in the opposite direction. Uh, if you can afford to send your kid to Harvard you and you don't send your kid to Harvard, you're, uh, you're kneecapping your kid because your kid's a member of the 1%. He's, he's, he's garbage larva. He's, 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 <laughs> he's blue blood Mayflower fucking yeah. pa parasitic so, uh, DNA. And he needs his Harvard UV ray, yeah. his tanning booth to pass through so he can be a baked in Harvard fucking moron and go get his oil wells and his fucking that, fucking fucking shit back. <laughs> so so I got good news for you. Okay. I got good news for you. That's a myth. Okay. Okay. okay? All right. So, 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 so they actually somebody did that study. They looked at people accepted by Harvard, right? All the people who accepted by Harvard, and they looked at the people who chose not to go and compared them to people who went. Turns out that if you are from the top four 
of the five socioeconomic cl- uh, strata, right? So basically mm-hmm. the top 80%, right? It makes zero difference whether or not you chose to go to Harvard or to state school. Mm-hmm. Where it does help, and it does help, is that if you come from the 20% poorest households in the country, which make up a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of, uh, of Harvard students, those students actually do have some better uh, future earnings, et cetera, if they went the Harvard path versus not, but it's not that much. And yeah. it's usually because it's, they started out at zero. Correct, because they started. They started with a huge, huge, huge amount of uh, amount of, of downside, and they do meet some people that will help them out. So that does help. But guess what? What makes you successful in life? And this is actually a, a damnation of universities because I don't think it should be this way. But what makes you successful in life is just how good you are, right? But what universities should be doing is they should actually be adding value. They should actually be teaching to do those things. There should be places where you go you, and you go, you I don't know, I play about. a little bit of piano, but I, 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 I've, I've always liked English class. I came here to be a journalist major, and they go, wrong, you're Billy Joel. Yeah. You know, and they funnel, and they make you into Billy Joel. That's what a, sure. any school should be. That's yeah. what any household should be. Yeah. Your kids should be born with proclivities that are natural, interests that are natural. Sometimes those are contrasting. You put a piano in front of your kid. You put a, you put a, a football in front of your kid. You put a, 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 a lock pick in front of your kid. It may be, uh, just in D&D terms, maybe you? they're going to be an expert thief. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, and, 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 and they respond to stuff and they don't respond to stuff. You know, and you break all, by the way, as a subset of that. That, you know, you break all gender norms and, and all that stuff because, you know, d- d- regardless of what we think about this stuff anyways. But I, 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 who cares? I'm patting myself on the back for what am I barfing you at? <laughs> I, at you. I, I, I'm very curious about one thing because I just want to make sure I got the picture here. Because yeah. that girl in that example, th- when that professor says that F is actually a C plus, is he saying that because of that girl's background? No. Or, is he, or is it just because there's because a rule of, of so that rule, So the rule so, are, so the, so order, the poor kids are benefiting from the no F process. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Every, everybody goes to the customers. Benefit. They're customers, right? So and, nobody wants to get a right. cold, happy well, the meal. teachers they get rated on how good their students Bingo. do. Right? Bingo. And so, and so, in order to give the girl an F, there is a way to give her an F. After she missed the first midterm, they had to call her into a teacher student conference and have a written down uh, corrective action plan. Even though in the rules she could have missed the midterm, then after she missed the second midterm, they had to bring her back in and have her sign on a different corrective action plan because the first one clearly didn't work. And then, and only then, if she then misses the final, just doesn't show up, then they can give her an F. People don't bother doing it. Mm. Wow. Right? And so, but, but there's one other thing that, that universities should be doing, which is what you were talking about at the beginning of the show, which is those filters, right? the, the ways to train your mind to deal with what comes at you, that is the job of universities. Yeah. That is the definition of higher education. Universities don't do that. And instead, we're giving C pluses to absolute morons that can go on to become legislators. And we're giving also, uh, look, I'll say it. I'm going to sound like one of the bad guys. We're giving safe, safe spaces to kids that complain that Catcher on the Rye made them yeah. uncomfortable because it has the word fag in it. Absolutely. Well, this seems all pretty terrible. I wish there was someone here (laughs) that had a plan because we're good at complaining, but if only there was someone, help me. uh, There's got to be a better way. (laughs) I want to know how we got here and where we're going. (laughs) So, so where are we going? So we, we believe that we've sketched out something that, that works. You and your improv troupe. Exactly. (laughs) You know, we have a whole group of people now. Um, So we actually started a new university. We started a new university program. Um, uh, that's actually part of the uh, KGI, which is one of the Claremont colleges here in Southern California. Um, and our students go through a, a, a completely reimagined four-year undergraduate curriculum. It's accredited. It's very, very selective, very hard to get in. But unlike the traditional profile of, of other universities, we just choose not to discriminate. It was an odd choice. And so we, we, ch- we charge. Even if for they're black? It, 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 across the board, right? You mean Zero you don't discrimination. discriminate among the different kinds of black people for the black people program? Uh, there is no, there's no black person program. At, well, at how do you tell the black hygienist. students from the. We don't. So, no here, so here's the repair. crazy thing about what we do. Here's the crazy thing about what we do. We have no quotas. We have no buckets. We have no slots. We don't say, oh, you have to compete for this you know, position. If you qualify for a program, it's very hard to qualify. But if you qualify, you get in. Okay? And we charge for tuition fees, room and board, the whole thing, less than $30,000 a year. So less than half of what the Ivy League charge, right? which is sixty to 70000 now. And despite the fact that we charge less than half, 80% of our students can't afford it. 
Right. What's a state school cost? About the same. Okay. And that's subsidized by the government. We're not. I'm sorry. Okay. I've got to pick my nose right on camera because it's just there's a trapdoor booger, and look, I can either live with it or yep. I can fucking confront it. I have to do something about it. Now it's gone. <laughs> I'll let I'll let Reddit show that in replay. I, I picked it. I picked I picked my nose. Door. I do it with my thumb. That's why my nose looks like Harrison Ford's at 44. <laughs> Now, would a, would a guy like me make it into your program? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I, I want to try to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to recap what you said yeah. so that we can try because I'm dumb and drunk. And um, you're saying that you uh, because first of all, uh, you, you haven't built a brick and mortar uh, building yet. Where is that? you're saying you're using existing universities, but you started a program. We started an undergraduate program. Yeah, and what we do is rather than using kind of a campus based philosophy, we use a city-based philosophy. So our students, they actually spend their first year not in Southern California, but in San Francisco. And they live in a residence hall in the middle of the city. And then the next three years, they travel as a group. They live in six different countries all over the world. What? So they go from San Francisco, they go to Seoul, Hyderabad, Berlin, Buenos Aires, London, Taipei, and they come back to San Francisco to graduate. Are you a Bond villain? Huh? Well, I, I'm not, but perhaps our students will be Bond heroes. <laughs> Finally, but, they're placed in a yeah, pit yeah, in a yeah. broken pool queue is put, <laughs> between them. The one, the one super student that emerges from that pit goes to the moon. Actually, um, gets to go to Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I just want no, to go in there. I, I, please forgive me. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm saying. So you're saying it's so hard to understand. This, it's, yeah. a, it's a program. It's not a school. It's not a geographically located thing. It's a program. It's geographically located. It's just not located in a campus. It's located in the city. Cities. Okay, and, like, and, but but everywhere these people are going, the faculty like there's not you're not you're not so we have you're not invading existing schools and no, saying let us invading. piggyback on your infrastructure. That's right. That's you right. have your own teachers, we have our your own, own curriculum, our professors, our own curriculum, and the curriculum the way it's structured is in the first year they spend the entire first year training their minds. They, they learn four systems of thought. We're talking about complex systems, basically. We're talking about, at the beginning, how, how we are all complex systems, right? Anywhere from uh, people to animals to... Uh, the first to, year is how to think. It, the first year is systems of thinking, right? So how to use logic and reasoning and statistics. How to look at the world around you and understand how things work when data isn't clear. How to think about unintended consequences and effective interactions. How to think about how to communicate effectively. So one of of the things that you were talking about is one of the things we actually teach. It's called audience, right? Hashtag audience, which is a habit of mind to understand who it is that you're talking to before you start talking, right? To actually understand how are they going to receive what I'm saying? And, and by the way, there's the corollary to that, which is why are they saying those things to me? What are they actually, what is the question behind the question or the statement behind the statement? So that's like communication theory. And so stuff. that's part of commu uh, effective right. communication. Well, that seems like that's compatible with modern problematization. <laughs> yes. I, uh, to, 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 to pronounce it in the original French. <laughs> Pro problematization, uh, which can be so, which which I I heard a student telling me, explaining to me about that you're picking apart things, and then I looked it up. Like, what is this? It's like a it's like a sort of digestive process of any yes. piece of information. You can just look around your world and start corroding it. With, Correct. <laughs> which, which, right. And you don't yeah. like the word filter, which is right. I think about it as lenses. You, we give you a hundred different lenses to sharpen your view of the world. Don't lenses filter light? Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's oh, true. Shit. They okay. focus. They focus. They focus light. Right? Okay. I'm just saying. Don't, <laughs> but don't it is fantastic to – yeah, because I feel like if, we, if there's one thing off of – I'm Generation X. I'm the David Cross, Jeanine Garofalo, uh, uh, Brandon Johnson generation. I, uh, I, 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 I floated my boat. For the longest time, Brandon and I have talked about this, how our generation kind of we 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 weren't like millennials. However, we were, we're you know, lazy is lazy. Like we learned how to be anti-corporate yeah. when we were 25. We learned how Jamba Juice is just fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's all sugar. You know, every, everything with a, everything with a little C in a circle or a TM on it is bullshit. And everything corporate is bullshit. Money's bullshit and all this stuff. We, 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 we didn't. And then the millennials started rubbing us the wrong way because they're like, I don't know. I love recycling. I mean, if the president tells me to do it, my mom's my best friend. And we're like, these people are going to be fascists if they intersect with the right president. 
And I am on record in this podcast as saying that if you can bear it, scroll back through this horrible fucking podcast. However, I also went and bought a gun and some things didn't go my way. I've also said horrible things and made rape jokes. All right. So don't go back. Don't go back. Um, but, 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 but like it, it, the, the, the place where we intersect is I, th- I think yeah. like, like, like our generation, my generation is like, we it, that's like a little bit of paprika a little pepper it's, it's like could we please just change lenses constantly and always look at everything and see who's gaining right. and who's losing and question everything right. and kind of like like be jaded about it a little bit absolutely um and but, but, but you don't need to be jaded you have to actually just look at it you actually have to get down to the to the core of what the issues are right and i think that's actually where our generation was we were primed i think probably this is why you know i came up with this concept which is when i went to college that's what i was primed for I was primed for exactly that. I wanted to go to college. And well, in movies and TV, that's what it always is. It's, right. a, it's always like these crazy thematic yes. John Hausmans at the front going, right, exactly. I expect <laughs> you to work so much harder than you ever. Yeah. And, then, and then like the people turn their papers in right. and it's like, I'm so, look, I'm sorry, professor, I just didn't agree with you on this one. And that is why you got an A. <laughs> you know, like everything like colleges as depicted right. in right. our culture right. are these places where you're fucking the bullshit yeah. starts off campus. Yeah. That's why Kent State. That's why they. That's why Kent State tipped off. It's like they fucking invaded the the right. the goddamn uh, uh, Pentagon of of culture. Our children, our youth. Like we, you're allowed to protest. You're allowed. To, and they sent the National Guard onto a campus, and someone got shot. And it was like this is over now. Yeah. You fucked up. Just as when a journalist getting shot in the Roaring Twenties was the reason organized crime got shut the fuck down. You shot a journalist. It was like always there was this respect for yeah. these things that. Uh, that, that should have kept me safe. <sighs> uh, <laughs> this is a heavy podcast. Really. No, it's a heavy, selfish yeah. one. It's, it's where I come to like, like I just plea with the cameras. I go, can you it's hear the shelling? So Someone much. send me blood. <laughs> uh, but, but, I just Please, wanna, someone send us blood. <laughs> what are you, Dan? Send I'm an me. O positive. I, you know what? I I, th- I think you should be a little more O negative sometimes. That's the problem with your generation. <laughs> uh, the uh, so 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 how, how, how okay. I, I want to I want to continue to talk to you. We have a full show tonight. We've also got I think somebody that's going to blend very well with you. I think either that or we're going to get the tanks are going to roll through the building once <laughs> once the two of you are together. But. Uh, um, I just want to like like just a little personal background. Yeah. Come on, come on, Ben Nelson. Stop avoiding intimacy. <laughs> who who are you? Well, how'd you end up on this warpath? Um, how did I end up on the warpath? It was uh, it was pretty simple. I mean, I was um, so went to college, idealistic, eighteen uh, year old, assuming John Hausman will be teaching me all of my classes, and but um, also that you'd be allowed to be John Kuzak in a sure thing. Uh, <laughs> That was the other half of the college yeah. dream was that you could go, you know what? I'm a fucking whiz English major. I'm going to I'm going to s- skip the midterm, but I'm going to make it up on the, you know, it's like you, you, you cut classes. And I was like, that was oh. part. It was like, you're grown up now. You're not a high school student anymore. You're an adult. You make your choices. And then like a lot of college dramas would feature that moment where the kid would have to come to terms. It's like, yeah, but you're scheduling your time and you're picking yeah. your priorities. Yeah. And in fact, I found that I, I could schedule my time completely because I never needed to go to class because the classes were, I mean, they just read books out loud to you and I could read them on my own. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's what my college experience was yeah, like. Yeah. And, and I didn't like that. No. I actually wanted to learn something. I could right? just buy a textbook. Exactly. Right. And so I, I thought that, you know, choice in, in college should be made when I was ready for it. Right. I'm actually not a big fan of choice right at the beginning yeah, because I'm time. still a kid. Yeah. Fresh, right? Freshman still, year. I have no at, idea at, what at I'm doing at that should point. Be, high school's over, right. you piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, pa- and part of that should be uh, like the mama cat like drops a crippled mouse, like not a dead one. Yeah. Disabled. Meaning yeah. Yeah. you can, you're going to, you can go do stand up Wednesday <laughs> nights. <laughs> right. Right. And then your grade's going to lower yeah. it down just a Correct. little bit. You're going to get enough you can, free exactly. agency. You can make those choices. Exactly. But you I'm just saying I should have, I should have, I should have been a, I should have had better grades at Marquette. <laughs> if there's one thing we can establish, I should For not have record. gotten an F in English. For the record. It is. I've been walking around that. I need to go to Gimlet Media uh, with my, for a heavyweight episode about how I need to confront my uh, college TA. All right. Why did you, well, real quick, why did you get an F? It was a systemic thing. Was it like, were you, you not literally, they tell you, you, 
your grade drops a grade level if you if you skip a class. Okay. So right there, oh. I'm dead. Wow. Yeah. Because that's, I, that's amazing. I never had that. So it wasn't then, about skill. They were it also was, starting a new thing attendance. called cooperative education, which is where the class shows up. There's a TA. The TA breaks everybody into groups. Boom. And the group gets a grade, shares a grade. Oh, yeah. Right, sure. So that was very offensive to my young, yeah. like, yeah. if if you had transplanted me into today, like, I was, you know, like, yeah, I was, like, I, I was in de- at risk of yeah, alt-right, but, you know, like, but, but, <laughs> indoctrination. But, 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 but see, but see here's, here's what I would make the argument. I would make the argument that if, if your university did its job, you wouldn't have missed any classes. You would have gone to class because it would have actually, you would have seen your mind develop. You'd say, oh, my God, I am smarter this week than I was last week, and I'm not going to miss out on that opportunity. And sometimes you do have to put in some structure. The problem is when you put in structure, and then the university doesn't deliver. you got to show up, and then you show up, and you're like, why you show the hell am I showing up? And then your TA the is point? reading Ray Bradbury right, exactly. and, and, and like texting while you sit in a circle of desks with uh, all your fellow freshmen going, I don't know what you want to do. I don't know what you want to do. Exactly. Exactly. What if we wrote a paper about licorice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh so okay. Well, so not to avoid intimacy, I I came up with this idea when I was a freshman, basically how to fix the curriculum of my university, and I spent four years trying to argue for people to listen. Nobody cared. Oh, they must have loved you. Uh, no, they didn't even <laughs> care. They didn't even care. And now that I'm here, I'd like to put up some wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, so I, I tried for four years and I gave up. And, wow. and, and I said, what, what, what can I do? I couldn't do anything. I was on all these committees and all the rest. Nothing could happen. So I gave up and I said, you know, I think education is kind of important. I think it's kind of important for universities to actually educate students. And my guess is this is going to have some bad effects in the real world, but who knows, right? Who, what do I know? I'm an you know, uneducated 21-year-old. Uh, I just I have a university degree. So I went out into the real world, and then I encountered human beings. Um, and I encountered human beings in positions of pretty dramatic levels of decision-making, and they were intelligent, high IQ, they were well-meaning, they wanted to do good things, and they were making awful, awful decisions that impacted a lot of people's lives, right? I saw it in the working world, the corporate world, people were like making decisions and companies were going out of business and making boneheaded moves. I saw it obviously in politics, I saw it everywhere. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And by the way, it wasn't even... A, a partisan thing, right? I could I, I can even track when you know you know when era has gone by when you look fondly back at any any you know government uh, that we had over the past twenty some years, uh, and and you say, well, look, you know, you, you had Congress controlled on the right, on the left, etc. We never look back and say, oh my God, boy, wasn't that like a look at what you know the House of Representatives was able to do in 1996, or what did the Senate were able to do in 2002 or 2007? These were generally not well functioning organizations, right? And and they've they've just gotten progressively worse over time. You are an educational activist. Yeah, basically. absolutely. You're Which a disruptor. Not- no, no. Is, we don't. You're don't an obstructionist. We don't, we don't believe in disruption. Which we want to reform. <laughs> we want to reform. Yeah, that's super yeah. interesting because nobody is standing up for the rest of us in terms of getting educated. And it does seem as though universities have gotten more about can we do business in terms of uh, agriculture? Mm-hmm. If, can we do uh, um, medicine? Yep. Can we do law? Um, can we do business? They don't do architecture. They don't do dance. They don't do art anymore. They don't do any of the things that really fuel those three things that I listed initially. And, and, and again, from our perspective, totally right. And the most tragic, they no longer do general education. So General education someone... is the most important role of an undergraduate degree. That's why it's called an undergraduate degree. It's supposed to train the mind so that when you then figure out what you want to do, you go to get a graduate degree or you go into the workforce or what have you and then use the general systemic thinking, those general ideas. This all the world. goes back to capitalism because well that's an easy thing to say but it's a, it, it, because it goes back to when i'm 15 years old in 1989 uh in in in, in brown deer wisconsin like 
it's happening around me. I'm not aware of it yet, but looking back on it, I'm aware that like programs are being lifted and pulled. Now, some of them are, uh, well, actually, at that time, all the programs that were being lifted and pulled were like trade programs. Right. Music. My best friend, Dave Friedel, yeah. who, uh, who's great. been on the podcast and stuff, he was a huge beneficiary of the, um, uh, just the, 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 there was a, there was a program at my high school where if you were really interested in food service, you could take classes at our high school and then there was an internship and there was all these things. And he was like one of the last people through that shoot and ha and was able to, he's, he's not now uh, Wolfgang Puck. He's now a fucking coder. He, he, and, and a system, whatever he's got, a, he's got a, a, a digital job. He's, but the, but he was able to not slip through the cracks and fall into fucking hell yeah. um, because his, you know, he wasn't a guy, he had a different kind of, he, he didn't excel on tests or in geometry or whatever, but he was fucking nailing it in these food service classes. And there was programs in every public high school. There would be like tendrils going into, oh, you want to, oh, you're a dirt ball. That's what I affectionately call them. Uh, like, like, like we have a fucking auto shop at our high school. And then also we have paths for you. Like they are not like in the old world European class system, like, oh, you were born in this tax bracket so you're going to be a right. mechanic it's right. more like hey you can't stop making making horrible jokes to the teacher after class and you don't <laughs> also care about isosceles triangles you you but you are like like there are opportunities there are like yeah. there's like there's like these there's fingers everywhere for all of our kids that like like you could end up being a genius proving that you were a genius in something that wasn't necessarily testing well in this or that area that's what was happening when i was 15 um it, it going on all around me then the follow-up to that is really that they they started caving in on the other side right. the school papers started shutting down right the first time after I, I went to visit my uh school paper editor he's like nope no more school paper you were like one of the last ones we don't we don't we don't train kids to be creative anymore. We train them to pass English tests. Now, the obvious answer to all of this, and we've all watched the, everyone in my audience has probably seen these documentaries. Like it's, it's because of these, there's the government agencies like who are, who are like, I guess accountable to their voters. Then they say to the school districts like, Oh, you've got to, you have to make your kids smarter. Like they're, 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 they're terrible people. Now they're rapists and murderers and carjackers, like make them smarter. And then the schools go, okay, we're going to, and, and, and then there's this weird thing happens where the tests become, everyone's just being trained to pass trained tests. Pass Otherwise tests. the schools lose their funding and all this stuff. Then meanwhile, on the, on the 1% side, all of these campuses who used to be the places where fuck society fuck your parents even yeah they paid for tuition but they paid tuition because because you know what this is a burgeoning industry this idea of shaping your young adult mind yeah. like like your parents are going to pay 50 grand and they're going to get a hippie spit out of this shoot and they're going to be like what the fuck did i pay for and we're going to be like a genius <laughs> and there was like there was like leeway there but then from yeah. all sides yeah. like you you've always you've been telling me about this like there was this yeah. there was a shift in the 80s yeah. 90s like where it was like basically in general financial institutions started hanging out at the yeah. bars where city where government hung out at right. and started going hey you want a pack of cigarettes follow me to my van <laughs> and then all government became slowly like the, it metastasized this entire thing the entire the separation of government and 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 business just disappeared and now government is just taking it up the butt not using that derogatorily they're maybe they're in, because they're enjoying it <laughs> and they have a right to to do it, Boy, but really, we need new colloquialisms. Right, it turns out we need, <laughs> yeah, it's we, fine. Need, we need, we need, we, we need new ways of stating yeah. like, like we need a new word for pussy, and we need a new, this is like always like you can't that. be need, David Mamet anymore. You can't just say you know what words. you're gonna swallow my cum, you <laughs> fucking faggot pussy. We uh, need all curse words. You might you yeah. might have a, an important point about yeah. about about dynamics, uh, but but yeah. So so I'm so obviously I, I don't know if this was a nefarious plan, but it, it certainly evolved this way. And again, I think it's a lot because of unintended consequences, right? So uh, give you an example of like wh why, why, are the, why, at least from my perspective, a lot of these things changed. In the early 1980s, U.S. News and World Report came out with uh, ranking of colleges. And I would argue that that event actually accelerated all of these previous inclinations that the institutions had, but never really acted upon because it was never really in their interest, 
Right. All of a sudden, they had they're in their interest to do stupid things like restrict the number of students that can come to the u- university because they wanted to have you know low acceptance rates and then have a lot of professors for uh, every student. But you didn't actually want the professor to teach the students. You want them to be in the lab doing research, and then you wanted to spend as much money as possible on that professor to do research so that you would go up in the in the rankings. And if you did that, guess what? You need a lot of rich kids to support this constricted number of seats. Right. It, and, and the so, reverse would be a party school. You would show pictures correct. Of, of the football team. You'd show pictures of great fans and people spring breaking it up. And, and exactly. All of, and, yeah. and, all, and what both of those have in common and what all of that has in common with, meanwhile, in the inner cities, uh, kids being pushed through that can pass uh, tests. All of that, yeah, it goes back to the hydra of exactly. capitalism, so it, it, which it isn't a bad back. thing unless, but, but, well, maybe it is a bad thing. Well, it's, Why bad, don't we, it's bad because what happens in the in the outcome is that if if the school this is kind of where it comes back to the banks and everybody else those institutions want to hire ultimately and wind up hiring the sons and daughters of rich people if you and, trust the u.s dollar to uh measure everything if you trust it to uh, uh give equivalence uh everything is going to have a price human life is going to have a price like they, they, we, we 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 know this it's right under our nose we know that medicine doesn't work privately we know that education is not working privately we know that like, like well but, it, we, but you know but it, it can if 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 you had people think systemically right so if the government rather than saying we're just going to subsidize universities and and to keep a blind eye if in 1965 when federal financial aid got in, implemented and all they said would be any university is eligible for federal financial aid if and only if the cost to attend that university rise at the rate of inflation or lower. Yes. If they just did that, you know how much every university would cost now? Like what we cost, grand. what we cost in tuition and fees. I They're, wasn't listening to that because I was thinking about because <laughs> I've been trying to bring up our second guest because I want to plug this key master into this gatekeeper. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to fight or 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 blow Uh-oh. up blow up New York, uh, <laughs> but uh, let's bring up our old friend Josh Androsky. Looking fresh. Uh, hi, hello. So socialists no. are, are dressing differently now that, since the last time we talked. Yeah, I figured I wouldn't wear a flannel, <laughs> uh, and I'm instead wearing a Shannon and the Clam shirt with two Barts kissing. That white jacket though is dope. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's luxury that, socialism. Have you it been is taking luxury. any of this stuff in, Josh? Yes. Um, I uh, so. I'm a little I'm I'm conflicted personally with my ideology. Uh I agree that um I think schools should be public institutions. I think that as a society we should value education and we should put people in our government that value education and uh and again the tendrils of capitalism have infected education, healthcare, blah blah blah, all that shit. Uh but I am also very intrigued at you destroying Harvard. Uh, because reforming, reforming. We want to reform. I, uh, I'm an accelerationist. I think that Harvard is the ISIS of comedy. Uh, and I think that they deserve to go down. That is uh, hilarious. The best of comedy. Yes. Uh, I mean, just look at SNL. Um, but uh, the, it, it, For those who don't know, there's a huge rivalry in the comedy community between Harvard and uh, working guys. Guys yeah. who fucking actually tell jokes and love it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and, but it, it, it's, it's the exact thing where it's like it's, you get into Harvard because you have the same last name as someone who got into Harvard. And then, oh, my God, look at you. You're writing on the show that used to be good and is now bad. Uh, it's so weird that there's more Harvard people. Uh, the best Harvard alum is the Unabomber. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> as a word for the other, I don't know, as a, as a showrunner who has therefore accidentally hired Ivy League guys, uh, I like, you know, I, I'm looking Looking back now, actually, since the election is like as I, in the room, I used to like mock all my Ivy League guys because I have class issues because I'm like I, I and I'm like oh, they teach you that at Harvard they teach you that yeah but like, like the is, they don't teach them anything there there so is some kind of co correlation it's probably not cause effect but there's a correlation yeah they keep the lights on 
Uh, I mean, you got to have people who actually show up to work. Well, and that's I, the Harvard guys. Comedy, <laughs> comedy, comedy writing requires a support system, yeah. and um, so if you're from the streets uh, and you want to be a comedy writer, uh, you're 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 at this huge disadvantage, which is at, 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 at the same time means that okay, so if you want the veal cutlets, like go with the people that had the support system, because if at 13, if you were Harvard bound and you decided you wanted to be a car harvard writer there you can you can then split that assembly line into hacks and geniuses and and so there are still there are people that come out of the ivy league that, that knew talented. that they wanted to go in there Allegedly. knowing yes. i want to be a, a, a comedy writer and I've, I've 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 worked with these guys and like yeah it's like it's whatever it, 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 I, I didn't mean to piss on your fun parade and go like well not everybody's everything hashtag not all harvards yeah. <laughs> and uh, it is a fun it's a no, fun rivalry. Exactly right. it's not a real yeah. rivalry no, because if it was, they would destroy us. <laughs> They're so rich. <laughs> they could get a drone, it'd be over. Um, but uh, Shots yeah, so, rang out. But what, why isn't education, so what, what? if we tomorrow, if we created a utopian base on the moon and we said, okay, I mean, we would, none, nobody up here would privatize any aspect of education, would we, ever? What, well, what do you mean by privatize? Maybe, well, I mean charge money for it, but I think I, well, know I would absolutely. I'll you tell you would. I'll tell you, why. I'll tell you why. I mean, a nonprofit private universities are still private, right? right? I mean, Berkeley is public, Harvard is private, Stanford is private, uh, SUNY is public, right? Now, here's I'm actually opposed to the idea of free college, and I'll tell you why uh -oh. because uh, it's a regressive policy, right? Think to about who? it. So, so when, so if you think about college, like let's say, just say, not higher education, but just college, right? Like Louis like, Louis playing and people are chugging beers. College, <laughs> yes, yeah. that that okay. college, right? Who who goes to college? Black rich people. people. So well, rich people, well, that's, that's and people cool. and people who are eventually going to be relatively wealthy, right? right? Who is the tax base of this country? A hundred percent of Americans, one way, shape, or form, you pay in taxes into this government. And so if you say, I'm going to take a hundred percent of people's money and effectively give it to rich people who can, who don't need it and people who will be rich, maybe some of them will need, you know, do need a leg up, but eventually we'll be able to actually. I think you're distorting back. the numbers cr like crazy. Uh, like there's way less rich people than. Poor people, or you know, there's fewer rich people than there are people that could use college for free. Oh yeah, free. for sure. But the problem so. is that rich people are overwhelmingly going to college, whereas poor people, in proportion, because they can't do not. afford it. And if they could, even, then they would overwhelmingly even, go to college. Even if they can't afford it, the problem well, goes much earlier. Well, I think right? it's why, that, that's why I wanted to. Yeah, I simplified issue. it by saying if we were if if we were on the moon, if we if yeah. we if all we it's had utopia, if yeah. all we had was some uh, uh, well, it's a no, it's a disaster. All we have is a, a <laughs> oh, couple. That, that, all we have yeah. is a couple. Of Cans of uh, air and some <laughs> tents and some you know we got a hundred yeah. people right. and uh, and and we're designing a society right. now so we want to pick like which which parts of our society are uh, driven by the by the moon dollar if 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 anything is going to be um, if there is going to be a moon dollar I should say. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, that's what I meant. It was like, mm -hmm. like if we're starting from scratch, because yeah. it sounds like more like you're being more pragmatic. I'm being more, more pragmatic. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're saying like, oh, if you change this light bulb and plug in this Christmas ornament, like, right. it, it, I, the I'm saying like, burn. I think ideologically, it's like, why would education ever be purchasable? Sure. Why would it ever? Why would? Why would? Why would any child, uh, whether they're uh, one years old, 25 years old, 48 years old, why would any student um, be, if, if that wants to learn mm -hmm. anything, uh, why does it benefit your society if, mo if the moon is going to go to war with Mars and the moon has right. decided to charge money for education and Mars hasn't? Mars I feel win. like Mars, Mars is going to win. win. Absolutely. In the long run. Now, yes. we have a different problem here because right. we could also say, oh, legalize everything. But if we legalize all drugs tomorrow here in our situation, we're going to have Party blood on hands. our hands. Mm -hmm. There's people Except what's illegal? What drugs are illegal? 
Well, I'm just saying that I'm just saying like it's, there's a difference between having these conversations when there's an existing the existing you know, infrastructure. How, how, how do we, how do, how do we move? Not, there are no silver bullets. But yeah, there's right? in, within the existing infrastructure, I still think that um, you're 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 being a little tricky with numbers and and with statistics because you say that uh, poor people, regardless of how affordable college is, uh, wouldn't go. Is no, no, that I'm, no, no. I'm all for the why is it giving, regressive? Be, it's regressive because if you can afford seventy thousand dollars a year right and somebody says let that person go for free on the taxpayer's dollar that's insane i'm totally that's not fine. insane that's, I'm, yeah, i think I, that's I, insane i'm fine insane. giving the like I, six rich people the money if the 94 out of the because, 100 but it's not we don't, know what, we don't know what social class is going to yield the doctor that produces the cure for cancer but yep. they're going to college anyway no they don't not. need they no. don't need like no, the, a not. bunch of they, them are going they to jail do need no the, the, they do the, need the, the kids <laughs> the kids that are that can afford it mommy and daddy are writing that check Right, but the kids well, who can't afford it might be the ones to cure the disease that we don't even know we're going to get yet. So we need to focus on them. But why would you not means test access to college? Doesn't make any sense. If oh, you have the means, means test, means test is interesting, but denying access will never yield the result. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying means the opposite. Means is what got I'm, us into this problem in the first place. Where swe- if you look throughout the history of America, sweeping programs, you know, for example, uh, you look at like the golden age of comedy, right? The golden age of comedy, you had all these public works, theaters, and places where people could do music, and, and, and all of these things were funded by a class trader in the yeah. White House, right? And so without that, these broke Jew immigrants that like my come from you know wouldn't be able to go learn to play the trombone and then become sid caesar sure you know and so if it was means tested it would be like ah if you make fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars you get to go to college if you make fifteen thousand one dollars you don't get to go to college it's just a badly designed program right i mean but i I think it goes beyond that where where the idea and and for those that don't understand uh the the idea of means testing is to put a, a sort of line in the sand where you go if you're more poor than this you get this if if you're not, you, you don't. And, and certainly there will be absolutely uh, people that are rich or who don't need the program who will uh, benefit from it. But if you look, I mean, it, 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 realistically, at the numbers, there's far more people who deserve something that will be getting it. That's why I believe that healthcare should be, you know, uh, totally free and public and public universities. And I actually do think that there is a place for private universities, for profit private universities within Certainly. the system optionally because i don't believe be in like a like, with, stalin uh, thing to, to me educational i guess private privatization would be analogous with uh, elective surgery like i want to look like mel brooks uh but then, don't you uh, think you're then okay advantage? then you have to pay for that Wait, the but, government but, doesn't but, pay for but that but that's not good that's what? not good because then all of the rich people this is what you have today you have the poor people going to the poor university and you have the rich people going to the rich university where is goldman sachs going to go higher I mean, hopefully nowhere near my friends. <laughs> okay, well, but, but the look point at si- is, is when that- it comes to sciences, though, it doesn't matter which university you go to. It's the results that you yield. It's the skills that you learn. You, correct. Right. So, but then again, you have to resource those universities to provide those results. Right but, right. but that's what happens. Rich companies come in and they buy half of University of Wisconsin to develop something for their company. But when you limit access, you guarantee that you are not going to get the best. Oh, no, product. exactly. So you, you what so you have it, to do is you have to change. So again, this is a good way. So here, I'll give you a, a solution that I would implement if I was sure. like mad, magic wand, right? So my magic wand would be um, the government makes a declaration, which is if you want to be a nonprofit, if you want to have any federal dollars, any, any kind, you know, access to Apollo grants, not pay taxes and all the rest, very simply, your student body needs to roughly align to the socioeconomic spectrum in the United States. Right? Just by deciles. Right? You get 10% of your students from the top 10%, 10% from the bottom 10%, and throughout. If you do not do that, all of your federal funding, gone. Deal. Right? At that point, you have solved the access problem overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I I mean, or you you don't have to do anything for free, right? You just have to actually get those units. So Harvard won't be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It would be 10% and 90 from the bottom. They would take no chances. Right. I, so this is this to me is something that, that you I could feel do. like that system sounds better for Congress. If yeah. like Congress had to have like a, a representative like spectrum of wealth as like America. But for like 
you know, if, if we talk about how you need a college education for a job, if we talk about, you know, how, like, for me personally and for a lot of people, I think education is a human right, yep. then uh, anything that you do to get rid of access, uh, to, to limit access to all people is, is bad. And, and, yeah. and that's not to say that, like, you know, if you go to the poor school or whatever, you know, it, it would be in a situation where, because of the taxes, because of the money coming in, there would be all this new money coming into public universities. So those schools would become better, right? If there's more people, if there's more perspectives, if there's more money coming in, then people who go to those schools who luck out and become, you know, people who can hire people, they will go, I'm not going to hire from Harvard. You know, like this hypothetical Correct. is just as realistic as Correct. your hypothetical. Correct. If you, if you actually create a much, much more well-resourced, fo education-focused public university that actually teaches people how to think, right. and you have the privates keeping doing whatever they're doing, then you're definitely right, right? Yeah, the, yeah then I think... The, the, I, the, the, the shift, the, the tide will shift. I think with my like, drunken brain, I think I'm just dumb enough to perceive the two smart people are agreeing, but that you guys are uh, different distances from the problem. Yeah. That, uh, that not distances from the problem being a, a that, 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 that you're, you're, you were you were born from it and like have a fucking like you're you you want to like dig in and like plug this wire into that wire and like hot wire this car and josh is going like why fucking cars man <laughs> like like, like and, 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 and and i think both of you are are, are agreeing but or i'm dumb and drunk no, I, I and that's think, at least half true i think absolutely that your system has a place within the system that i'm imagining you know i i think that um that they're they're absolutely it's 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 absurd that you know the Ivies run the way they do with legacy bullshit and right. and all of that and that absolutely needs to be reformed right. and that there absolutely is a place in the world for those who choose electively to uh, join a for profit specialized you know private right. institution like Devry. Uh, <laughs> or ITT, yeah, or I'm, several places you could go to. We will we'll leave links. Um, yeah, if you use the promo code, whoops, <laughs> you can join University of Phoenix right now.